edition of No Refunds. I am PG Cooper. And I am H.T. Schuyler. Now, in 1962, after years of trying to bring Ian Fleming's works to the big screen, Dr. No arrived in theaters and uh, was the first real theatrical James Bond film. And from then on, uh, several sequels came. Huge success uh, for film. One of the biggest franchises of all time. Blah, blah, blah. Still going strong today. I've heard all that stuff before. And we decided it'd be fun to go back to the beginning and do James Bond Marathon from Dr. No all the way up to Skyfall. We did not watch all 23 films in one night, however. We're going to do this in uh, groups of three, which will take, by my math, eight uh, marathons to get through. And this will be our first, where we look at Dr. No from Rush With Love and Goldfinger. Now, before we get into our thoughts of these movies specifically, what was your exposure like to the Bond movies going into this? Um, I'd only seen a few James Bond films. I, I I've always liked James Bond. I mean, who ha- who doesn't? But I hadn't seen a whole lot. I'd seen I'd seen From Rush with Love. I'd seen a handful of uh, of Roger Moore films when I was younger. I don't remember them that well. I think it was like View to a Kill and Moonraker and stuff like that. So you know the best ones. So <laughs> um, I'd seen I think all the Pierce Brosnan ones, and I've seen all the Craig ones. So, um, but I hadn't seen like many of the like. Original, so I hadn't seen, seen a lot of Connery ones. I, I think I see, saw a uh, Timothy Dalton one as well. I don't know which one, but anyway. And and what was your exposure to Bond? <laughs> um, I think it's pretty well documented for anyone who's read the site that I'm a pretty huge fan and I have been since I was a kid. You know, growing up with them, watching them with my dad, good times, good memories. So I've seen every Bond film at, at least twice, I would say. So going back to this series is more about me either a reliving you know movies that i love or b trying to find come to a deciding factor about where i feel about a lot of these movies because some of them you know i i love unapologetically and there's no it's fun to go back to others are well not in this series but eventually are going to be a bit more painful the episode where we discuss uh uh, diamonds are forever living the die the man with the golden gun is gonna be fucking brutal (laughs) but for now uh was good stuff to go back so do you want to get started then with the first movie yeah um the first film was what 1962 yeah and that was dr no starring sean connery and some people um <laughs> I do... ursula andrus joseph wiseman okay i do not remember the plot so i'll, I'll yeah. take it away then in jamaica an mi6 agent is killed for uh in the process of their investigations prompting mi6 to send james bond to investigate what follows is a more low-key for Bond standard story, even though it still involves a mega, megalomaniacal madman with metal hands, but still low-key for Bond, where James Bond goes and investigates and discovers who the culprit is behind his brethren agent's death. So, what did you think of Dr. No? I liked Dr. No quite a bit. Um, it wasn't like edge-of-your-seat action or anything like that. Um, it, was a, it was a slow burn, and uh, I... I think I mentioned at one point that the film wasn't really keeping my attention. I mean, I, I I enjoyed it, but it's the type of film that, like, I feel like you can talk over it and not really miss anything. Um, I mean, that sounds terrible, but it, uh, I don't know, like, it, it's a, like, it's a well-made film. It's enjoyable. There's a lot of, uh, a lot of really key Bond moments in it that, like, you know, started it all. That's really cool. Uh, Connery's great. There's some really, really great action scenes in it. Um, but like, I don't know, like, I can't really say it was a lot of fun, but it was enjoyable. So, um, yeah, I don't know. I don't have a whole lot to really say about right. it. For the longest time, uh, well, when I first saw, actually, I'll backtrack this a bit. When I first saw Dr. No, uh, at least when I first sat down and watched it from beginning to end as a, you know, a more mature film goer, I wasn't all that jazzed about it. I thought it was really slow and kind of dull and not that interesting. And then... As I went through, I started to look at Dr. No more and more fondly, eventually revisited it, and I thought it was one of the best, hands down. Watching it again this time, I still think it's in the canon of the great Bond films, but it's probably not as great as I initially thought it to be. Uh, I'll get to the stuff I love about it later, because there is a lot, but as far as things that don't really work, I don't... For example, we'll look at Honey Rider, the Bond girl in it, who as far as iconicness goes is one of the most iconic bond girls of all time by far however her personality is non-existent like i don't have anything to say about her as a person i mean she looks great in a swimsuit and that's that's about all i can say about her she doesn't really do anything she's not even in the movie that much uh there's some 
sloppy elements to the direction i find like just things that are dropped for no reason like there's this there's these uh hitmen in the movie the three blind mice <laughs> who i really like and then just disappear from the film there's a scene where they're trying to assassinate bond and like a, a car goes by and gets in their way and it fumbles their kill and then they're never in the movie again yeah you're right it. actually yeah yeah, because I was wondering that because like their opening scene where they're playing that three blind mm -hmm. by song and all that, like it's uh, it's cool and it's a good it's a great setup for them. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it doesn't go anywhere. Yeah, I they're, also they're think... not actually blind, are they? No. Okay. The climax sense, but... at the end is it's not bad, but it feels kind of rushed and then just sort of like the movie peaks when Bond and Doctor No meet and have dinner together. It's a great scene, and then there's a sort of action scene that's it's fine it's nothing special and the movie just sort of ends kind of abruptly it's awkwardly paced in that sense the film doesn't really have a natural flow about it and i also think for like a hard-boiled mystery there's not really a mystery you that you can actively solve like it's not like something where the clues are there for you to put together so you're just sort of waiting for it to go along even though i do really like the detective vibe going on now with all that criticism what do i like about the movie i love seeing all the little bondisms and looking at how they would become more nuanced in the series as, as the series would go you know it's fun to point out stuff like that like the opening credits uh some of the tropes some of the lines and it's fun to point them out and be like oh it's funny to see how that evolved later on sean connery is awesome right out of the gate he's 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 so cool like he's he's fucking awesome what can i say about sean connery uh i love dr no himself i think he's a great villain and then finally, and this is probably the most important point for solidifying this as a great Bond film in my eyes, there's so many scenes that I think are just fucking awesome that, that I know they are classic Bond scenes that it sort of automatically puts it in the canon of being one of the greats. So, yeah, that, that's where I feel on Dr. No. Yeah, and I mean, I agree with you on pretty much everything. Um, I don't know, like, the stuff that's really good, like, the stuff that's good is great, but, like, the, uh, I don't know, just it... The stuff that's kind of bad kind of sticks out quite a bit. Mm -hmm. um, I really like the scene where they're on that island and there's like that dragon, you know, quote yeah, unquote. I don't like that at all. Really, I thought that was awesome. That's actually one of the things that bothers me is the whole buildup of like, you know, the dragon legend. I'm like, this is kind of dumb. And then they reveal it and it's like, okay, that makes sense, but it was nothing. Like, there was no point for that buildup. I mean, the, the, the you didn't need a like, dragon. Did, did you, did you expect to like an actual dragon? No, 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 no. no, no. I'm, that would have been really bad. But uh, <laughs> I feel like. It's, it's like they wanted an extra layer of mystery to Dr. No and Crab Key Island, and it wasn't needed. We knew it was an island that was run by this person who had, had several other people killed, who had instilled fear into all his uh, subordinates, and who wasn't allowing anyone to visit. That's enough. You don't need to have, oh, the dragon, to well, make people I, interested. I, I didn't really feel that looming threat of the dragon until they're actually on the island. It's like, yeah, there's a dragon here. It's like, oh, okay, well, whatever. And then when they show it, like, it was just like, okay, well, it's a... It's like a tank, basically. Like, yeah, that, I, I do mean, like Sean. Well, the other thing is, like, on the tank, you can see like, like a painted red and like white, so it kind of looks like a mouth and teeth. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if that was, like, was Doctor No trying to convince people it was a dragon? Because that's also stupid. I do like Sean Connery's general annoyance every time they bring up like dragon. He's sort of like, whatever. Dragons yeah. <laughs> aren't real idiots. Well, that's why I kind of like the payoff because it's like it's yeah. a modern day dragon, I suppose. But, I guess. Uh, as opposed to the olden day dragons where it was like like a dragon heart yeah with also sean connery yeah oh uh. fuck that movie <laughs> um yeah o overall dr no yeah, very good film definitely important to the whole bond legacy i suppose but i don't know no, like not not one not one of the best but definitely not one of the worst well okay. from from what i've seen but yeah it's still probably up there with, i mean I, I haven't seen them all so yeah. The ones I've seen, it's definitely on the better half. So, uh, if you were to rate this, then, what would you give it? Um, I don't know, probably like a 7.5. Hmm. That's good. I mean, 7.5 or an 8, because it, it is still, like, you know, the, the beginning, you know. Right. Uh, what would you give it? I'm going to go A-, minus, which is pretty high, but... And I, I just look at it, like, despite all its flaws, there is a lot of stuff about it that's awesome. And a lot of stuff about it that will make me go back to it. Like, I'll see Dr. No again a few more times in the future mm -hmm. because of those scenes. So, all right, that's Dr. No. Now, moving on is From Russia With Love. And the plot of this film, this one is actually a pretty direct sequel to Dr. No. After the de Dr. No, a little bit of background, worked for the criminal organization Spectre. And I don't remember what it stands for, but anyway, they're a criminal organization. That's all you need to know. So they want revenge on Bond for the death of Dr. No. They want to get rid of Bond because he's clearly a threat. And they, there's this uh, MacGuffin, essentially, that they want for themselves, which is in the, in the film. It's a 
decoding machine. So they orchestrate this plot where they'll lure Bond to, uh, to, what is it, um, Israel? Is that where he is in the movie? Uh, Istanbul. Istanbul, yeah. Turkey. Yeah, cut that part out. <laughs> Alright, so, uh, they orchestrate this plot to lure Bond to Istanbul with a beautiful girl who thinks she's working for the Russian organization Smirsh, and what Spectre <laughs> does, that's a real Russian organization. I, I know, I love that though, Smirsh. Yeah, and <laughs> Spectre ends up playing everyone against each other. It sounds confusing for me to explain it, but when you watch it, it actually unfolds in a really interesting way. And, uh, yeah, you got more... Uh, the action's a bit bigger, but it's still a more low-key uh, film. Very clearly inspired by Alfred Hitchcock films, I would say. Especially North by Northwest. Yes. In fact, uh, the, a lot of the early Bonds use that as a template, to the point that Cary Grant was asked if he would like to play Bond. Yeah. But he'd only commit for one film, so they're like, hey, no. We're doing, <laughs> we're doing like, 23, so... <laughs> Yeah, but uh, so that uh, so what do you what do you think about From Rush with Love? Okay, well, one thing that you for, I mean they haven't really touched upon, and to me this one key factor is why this movie is awesome. Robert fucking Shaw, holy shit! I love every scene with that guy, and especially the train scene. That scene is pretty damn awesome. I love how he just sort of like taunts Bond. I love how uh, I love the payoff. I love how they have like a fight scene, but it's not like a really epic fight scene. It's just sort of them scrambling around. Mm-hmm. Um. I really like From Russia With Love. Um, definitely one of the best Bond films that I've seen. Um, I think it's very entertaining. It's very thrilling. It's, uh, it's very interesting. I, there's there's certain things in it that I think... I know what they were going for, but I just found it really, really dumb. Mainly... Okay, what's her, what's her name? That little... Rosa Klebb? God damn it. Yeah, I, I just... by Lotta Lenya? Yeah, because all, all I could think about is uh, Frau... Frau from... from uh, Scott! Yeah, all I could think about <laughs> is that person from Austin Powers. And, and also, like, that fight scene at the end with her, I don't know why, I just think it's laughably bad. But, I don't know, like, I... I, I, I get what they're going for with that. I just... I don't know. It, it seemed a little too absurd, but... Mm-hmm. I mean, this film has a much more... I don't want to say realistic, but it has a... It, it's much more grounded in reality as opposed to some of the other ones, and I found her character kind of took it out a little bit. Um, I really love the helicopter scene, definitely inspired by the crop duster scene in North by Northwest. Um, I really like the payoff with that. Um, I don't know, there's not a whole lot I can really... It's just overall, it's a, it's a great... It's like the perfect Bond film, except he doesn't say... He doesn't say uh, what his name is in it at yeah, all. Yeah, he doesn't say Bond, James Bond. He says it in the book, though. Hmm, well, yeah. why did they cut that out? I don't know. Actually, that's one of the things I liked about From Rush With Love is that it's, in many ways, like, the best film of... It's certainly one of the best Bond films. There's no argument there. And yet, it doesn't have as many Bondisms as one would expect. Like, it sort of works as a movie in and of itself. I like that a lot. Mm -hmm. But going into this one again, for the longest time, From Rush With Love was one of my all-time favorite films. Which may sound strange, but as far as escapism entertainment goes, I think it's perfect. I could watch it a thousand times over and still be entertained and I loved, loved, loved the hell out of this movie. So going in again and knowing that I was going to review it, it's a bit nerve-wracking because it's like, this movie I've put on such a pedestal, you know, am I going to watch it again? Is it still going to meet those standards? Am I going to realize that it's just a silly James Bond film and not really, you know, worth the praise I give it? Well, that didn't fucking happen because From Rush <laughs> With Love kicks ass. I fucking love this movie. Yeah, it's... This is going to, like, I can't even... There are things I guess I could point to impartially and be like, that's not good filmmaking. For example, the explosion at Kiram uh, Bay's palace uses a purple light effect. I don't really know why, because explosions do not generally cause purple lights, but I don't care. It works. It's What the film does, what the film sets out to do, it accomplishes perfectly, in my opinion. It has a fairly involved plot, at least for a Bond film, not to say that it's, you know, this masterwork of David Mamet-esque proportions, but for what it is, it's this really interesting story, and uh, it moves at a really nice pace. The, the first, they spend a lot of time setting it up, and then they give you a lot of action payoff. And the cool thing, too, about the action scenes is they're all really big. You've got, you know, boat chases and helicopter explosions and epic confrontations between, you know, mutually uh, matched adversaries. And yet, it all feels self-contained and grounded in a way that... I find kind of inspiring. It's it's interesting, I think, that the way they're able to, you know, make this big grand film still feel, give it a sense of plausibility, and I like that. I think that's really cool. I love the setting. Uh, I love Sean Connery as Bond. You mentioned Robert Shaw. That's my all-time favorite Bond villain, uh, Red Grant. He's not in the movie a lot, and he doesn't have the most, I guess, uh, 
you know, most big personality, but what he does is so effective and he's just, he just sticks with you. He's like the Boba Fett of James Bond <laughs> where he's not like in every scene, but when he's on there, you can't take your eyes off him. So, and yeah, you mentioned the train scene. That's probably my favorite scene in any Bond film. Mm-hmm. I love it. Yeah, definitely inspired. I mean, I hate to keep saying it was inspired by Hitchcock, but oh, I mean, definitely Hitchcock was. had a fetish for trains. And so. I'm pretty, yeah, and I'm pretty sure he actually liked From Russia With Love and was fond of it. Probably, yeah. And I know, well, he had to have been impressed by Sean Connery in Dr. No and From Russia With Love because he cast him in Marnie. Marnie, yeah. So, so well. Well, what did you think, actually, because this is the one thing about uh, From Russia With Love that usually isn't considered the best of Bond things, of uh, the Bond girl. Tatiana Romanova, played by Daniela Bianchi. Um, she was fine. I I really don't like how she's introduced. It just sort of she's like in. Wait, are they in his room or her room? His. His. Yeah, she shows up. She's like, hey, hey, and then they fuck. It's like, you know, in a perfect world that would happen, but <laughs> you know, in it, it has it doesn't make a lot of sense. Like I I understand from her perspective why she's doing it, but I don't know. That just that seemed very bizarre to me because like most of the Bond girls. Like, you know, they have to sort of go through... Not not always, but, like, there's a lead-up to Bond fucking them. I mean, not always, but... <laughs> I can't wait till we get to a view to a kill where Mayday just fucking shows up in his bed. And it's not like... Daniel Bianchi is, like, gorgeous, and she's on her mission and Bond's on his, so there's, like... They're gotta push to that eventually anyway. Mayday, who is Grace fucking Jones, just shows up in Roger Moore's bed and he's just like, Hello. <laughs> and they have sex, and it's like... Ugh. I don't know, like, that seemed, that seemed very bizarre to me. I mean, it's not as bad as in Skyfall when he creeps up on that chick and in the shower. <laughs> I mean, but even that, there was something leading up to it, and, mm-hmm. it, and it made sense. But um, she was fine, I guess. I mean, I, yeah. don't, I don't really think she's the most memorable, but... I don't you know. think she is either, but I think for what she does in the film, she's she's uh, she's good. I mean, I don't have any gripes with her, but that is the one element that would... If I'm, like, when I ranked, you know, favorite, like, all the Bond lists I did, yeah. for much with love was near the top of every subcategory mm-hmm. except Bond Girl where it was I mean it was in the upper half I guess but it wasn't in the you know mm-hmm. top echelon who, but, who was the bottom Bond Girl was it Halle Berry uh no I think for me it was uh the girl from A View to a Kill oh. mainly because all she does in the movies go James and it's really fucking what annoying. about Denise Richards Denise Richards is really bad but she's not even the main Bond Girl in it it's more about Electra. oh so you're right. her awfulness is sort of offset by Electra's interestingness yeah so, okay Fair enough. Uh, but, oh, um, I also really like about this movie, Q's, this is the first real introduction to Q, and in in, he's in Dr. No, but he's not played by Desmond Llewellyn, and all, he, all Bond gets is his uh, Walter PPK instead of the Beretta. In this film, he actually gets gadgets, but they're highly plausible. It's, it's just a suitcase that's decked out with, like, it's got a knife in the corner, it, can, it carries this sniper rifle, which was a real rifle, and it has, um, like, golden coins uh, hidden in the sides of it. And oh, and it's got like this exploding gas cartridge thing if you open it the wrong way. So it's sort of exotic in a sense that like it's not something that you know your average citizen is gonna have, but it doesn't feel outside the realms of reality. You know, it's not a it's not a wristwatch that shoots a, a concentrated laser beam, for example. <laughs> and not to say there's <laughs> anything wrong with those. Too. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, totally. And they make they take full use of it. So. Yep. Yeah, from Rush with Love. Awesome film. Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a really great, enjoyable, fun escapism. Yeah, what would you rate it? Um, probably like an 8.5 or a 9. Yeah. Out of 10. I'm assuming an A+. Plus a+. Plus. I can't even, I don't, it's, for the longest time, it was, it's been my favorite Bond film. I imagine after this series is over, it still will be. Spoiler alert, I guess, for when we make our list, but <laughs> the likelihood of something topping it is, is so slim. So I don't know, man. A view to a kill may, <laughs> may, may win you over. Yeah, man. That Duran Duran song they open with, beautiful. <laughs> I like Duran Duran. <laughs> uh, moving on. Um, so the first two films were directed by Mr. Terrence Young, who, for reasons I'm not entirely sure of, just because I haven't bothered to really look into it, he did not return for Goldfinger. Stepping into the director's chair was Guy Hamilton, who would bring a very different approach, where the first, where Doctor No is very much like a. Um, a low-key detective story, and from much with that was just a straight spy thriller. Goldfinger would embrace the more adventure and the more absurd aspects of the series, and would also become the a huge Bond hit and really put James Bond's name on the map in a way that it hadn't before. And is probably even though Thunderball made more money, I would say Goldfinger is the height of uh, Bond, I guess, success considering what it was before and what it reached after. So the plot involves. It's funny. For all the great things about Goldfinger plot, I actually have to think about more for Dr. No, for this one than I did for Dr. No and for Much With Love. But basically, 
Let's see. Okay. Auric Goldfinger is uh, a businessman who is in the business of gold, and he devises a plan to basically, uh, from an outsider's perspective, it's to break into Fort Knox. There turns out to be more to it than that, but that's the basic principle. So, of course, Bond is sent to stop him, and along the way, adventure ensues. And, yeah, Goldfinger. What do you think? I fucking loved Goldfinger. <laughs> <laughs> I had uh, I had a blast with this movie. Uh, it, it's, I, I don't even know where to start. Just everything from the opening the opening scene, like until the awesome you know villain send off at the end with the plane. Mm -hmm. It's just everything about it. Like it, uh, the reason I love it so much is for reasons that aren't really present in the previous films. And that's the absurdity that you're talking about. Like, this film just kind of goes all out, and there's a lot of moments that are just... They may seem really stupid and plausible, but they're entertaining as hell. And I just... I, I embrace that. I usually don't like when films are just crazy for the sake of being crazy, and it doesn't really fit in the overall tone. But in here, like, it, it works. I mean, the opening scene with, the, with like, him and Felix... <laughs> just that, like, <laughs> dink man talk, you know? Like, yeah. Just, and there's just so... There's so many, like key bond moments in this film that like like they're the moments that everyone thinks about like when he's when he's strapped to the table and that laser beam is about to you know cut his dick off and he's like do you expect me to talk he's like no i expect you to die or uh the aston martin as absurd as it is it's here and um like the odd job. The, odd job yeah the girl encased in gold just i don't know all of it is great and I have, like the henchmen goldfinger's henchmen that we're yeah. talking about they're great and just i don't know it feels very much like uh a kind of like quirky adventure film from like the 50s but it works really well like in like the comedy style and such and like the, the banter you can hear people talking about in the background and fuck, i don't even i don't even know like it's it's consistently entertaining mm -hmm. it's it's a really, really fun uh should connery connery's great i really like who played felix uh, I don't remember his name. Um, There's so many Felixes that... Yeah, I, actually, I, I liked Felix quite a bit. You lose track of them. <laughs> um, apparently, she's not that popular. I really liked Pussy Galore. Well, it, not that popular. It depends on the groups you're talking to. I know I, I knew people who were like, oh, she's so ugly, and I thought, really? She seems kind of hot to me. Yeah, she's I, old. She was the oldest Bond girl, though, and to this day is... She's famous. really not that old, though. Yeah, but... she's like 39. How fucked up is it that that's seen as, like, old woman... Yeah, no, I thought I thought she was beautiful actually, but you know, mm -hmm. and I love how she had Pussy Galore's flying circus. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's like a gang of you know sexy pilots. That just, <laughs> like, like just stupid shit like that. That's that's awesome though. It just did like to me. That's the kind of fun James Bond that you know that I think about when I think mm -hmm. about these films, and I don't know. I just I really dug it. But, yeah. yeah, uh, Goldfinger's awesome. I love Oric Goldfinger himself, Gert Frobe. He's actually dubbed by another actor, but I thought really? he was, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Why? Yeah, uh, he had a really thick accent. In fact, he, in fact, I don't even know if he spoke English. They just told him to speak fast, and then they dubbed it over. <laughs> uh, I love Odd Job. I think he's a great henchman. I think that the payoff they give for like his death is so goddamn cool. I know you were a bit underwhelmed because I guess I could. Have well, you, you, it built, up. you built it up quite a bit, and I'm like, wait, that's it? I expected him to fucking like explode or something. Yeah, but... I guess. I don't. I th I think it's awesome. I think it's. Uh, Pussy Galore is great. At the time, I would say definitely the best Bond girl. Uh, definitely the most, had the most personality. Um, let's see. Oh, the opening scene, I think, encapsulates everything about Bond. That's awesome. You know, sneaking around in the water with a fucking duck on top of his head. <laughs> taking off, oh, blowing up some buildings, taking off a wetsuit, real tuxedo. Uh. You know, saying some cool one-liners, making out with a hot girl, nearly getting killed. Killing the bad guy, making a pun, walking out. And then, boom, 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 the movie starts. It's so perfect. Yeah, and like that, I, I'm not a huge Shirley Bassey fan, but I was, I was humming that song all day. Right. Like it just, it, it just got stuck in my head. It was. Uh... Oh, I actually do want to talk about the one. I guess I have one big complaint with Goldfinger, which I'll get to. But as far as like little sort of nitpicks, I think the opening song is the best they've had so far. Mm -hmm. But as far as the credits go, I think it's kind of the worst because Doctor No was. There was no telling. They were just throwing shit at the screen. But I thought it yeah. was interesting, and it's cool to see how that became what it was. Yeah. And then From Rush With Love has the uh, images reflected on bodies. Yeah. And Goldfinger just does the same thing. Yeah. And it's kind of disappointing they didn't, you know, do something a bit more exciting. Wasn't it like a gold body, though? Yeah, but still. So there, Goldfinger. <laughs> yeah, I get it. but And I do I do love the song. That's such a, you know, it's it's one of the best Bond songs, I would say. And it's probably the most iconic one next yeah. to the 007 theme, of course. 
Um, uh, other points before I get into my... Oh, the action scenes are all a lot of fun. It's not really an action-heavy movie, which is kind of weird when you think about it. Yeah, it's not. You're right. Uh, Sean Connery gets to shine in this one in a way I don't think he could in the first two. Because I think he's great in the first two. I think he's, you know, just as good. But because of the types of movies they are, they don't really get to show off his comedic chops. And this one does. And he's funny as shit. Like, just little... Even little moments, like when he first meets Q, which is another great scene, because it's the first real Bond and Q scene where they show all the different Yeah, that seems gadgets. great, yeah. But when... Uh, you know, Bond asks him some of the lines of anything else, and Q says, well, I won't take more of an hour of your time if you give me your complete and undivided attention. And you see Sean Connery sort of making a face like, fuck, <laughs> tired of this shit. Little things like that really work. Like, you can tell that uh, Connery had sort of, like, a more freedom to sort yeah. of do what he wanted in this film. And, like, he, he was comfortable. He'd played the character twice mm. before, so, like, he... He kind of knew what he was doing, so he tried to, you know, yeah. do his own And you can tell he's it. still really in the groove of playing this, and liking yeah. it, and not mm-hmm. being excited about it. Yeah. And it's, it seems weird to talk about how great this film is on the, on the comedic level, but it is really funny. Mm-hmm. Like, th- th- I know you think it's stupid, but that scene where he escapes from the... Uh... Oh, I think it's hilarious. I just, like, <laughs> I think it works perfectly. It, it, it's ridiculous, it's though. It's so absurd. He fucking ducks, and the guard's like, where'd he go? It's like, <laughs> <laughs> he's fucking ducking. <laughs> But it's funny. It, I think it's a great moment. I think some of the lines when Goldfinger's like unveiling his plan, the lines that the mobsters have are so ridiculous that they're hysterical. Like when the pool, pool table yeah. is like turning. Hey, what's with that trick pool table? I don't <laughs> like this, Goldfinger. I don't like being enclosed in here. <laughs> like, what is this, a carousel? Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the lights go off. They're all like, oh, hey, what's going yeah. on there? <laughs> oh, yeah, I love it. It's ridiculous, but it's so fun. And that's the best way to describe Goldfinger. It's fun. I think Guy Hamilton brought that. Like, I love Terrence Young's movies. And he also does Thunderball later on, which again is more serious. We'll get to that in our next Bond show. And I love that approach, but I also love the comedy. And I think it's amazing that they work so well together. Like, watching this in a marathon, I mean, Goldfinger definitely stands out, but yeah. it doesn't feel detached from the other two, really. Yeah, no, no, not at all. So, um, did, uh, did Guy Hamilton, did he come back for anything? Yeah. <laughs> did he do Moonraker or something? He did Diamonds Are Forever, Live and Let's Die, and The Man with the Golden Gun. Really? Yeah. That's that's the thing, I think. I feel like with Guy Hamilton, he was the right guy at the right time for this one. Because, I mean, the comedy works so well in Goldfinger, but I feel like by the time... I think Goldfinger's kind of a hard act to pull off. Because of the nature of what it is, it's something that if you don't get right, it, it sort of fails horribly. Yeah. And that's what Diamonds Are Forever is. So, but I guess I should say the one scene I really am not fond of at all is the scene where Bond seduces Pussy, <laughs> which is... By seduce, I mean he takes her out to a farm and forces himself onto her. Now, I understand that the filmmakers are not going for a rape scene, but it plays kind of like a rape scene. Like, it's impossible not to think about it as a rape scene, and it's so awkward, it's so uncomfortable, and every time I see it, it gets worse. And adding insult to injury is the fact that up until that point, and I would even stay after, Pussy Galore is one of the most interesting Bond girls and has some of the most personality and is one of the strongest. And then Bond just rapes it out of her. It's so... Like, I, and like I said, I understand. They're not trying to make it a rape scene. It's supposed to be that, you know, more of a flirtatious scene, but it doesn't come off that way. And it just comes off as awkward. And it's one of those scenes where, like, if, if we were watching and there was a girl in the room watching with us, I'd be embarrassed. Hmm. Um, I, I feel bad saying this, but that scene didn't really bug me. Like, I'm not... Rapist? I'm not, I'm, I'm not advocating <laughs> rape at all, but I mean, I, I, I don't know. I mean... I, when I think of rape scenes in films, I think of like Last House on the Left, or, or like God forbid I spit on your grave, or you know <laughs> something something like that. But and you know that that's a fucking rape scene, and like God damn, those are disturbing. But in in this film, it's just I, I I don't know. I mean, he is sort of forcing himself on her, but it's almost like the scene in Straw Dogs where she sort of enjoys it to a degree. I mean, it's not it's not as, mm-hmm. it's not as disturbing as in Straw Dogs, but. Uh, I, I don't know, like, it starts with them sort of, like, playfully fighting, and you can tell up until then she's sort of fallen for his charm, or maybe I just assumed that she was. So when it actually happens, it was like, okay, well, I mean, yeah, he did sort of force himself on her, and you could never get away with that nowadays mm-hmm. um, in film, but I just think back in the 60s, I, guess, I don't think that was... Well, no, Mar- Marnie has his, another... Sean Connery was a, had a banner 64 year, but, uh, or 60, no, this was... No, 64, yeah, but uh, in Marnie, there's another scene where it's like, Kind of rapey, and it's kind of hard to watch and not think about really? it. Really, well, isn't Sean Connery like known for being crazy sexist? Well, kinda. He did say I think he, it's okay to hit a woman when they get out of line. <laughs> so, 
Fucking Connery. Yeah. Well, only he could get away with that. Well, that's the thing. is like, you'd think he, there'd be more flood. People don't really care, though. Because, like, first off, this is a different tangent. I guess we can cut this if it doesn't work. But I think when Connery's making those remarks, I mean, he's just sort of saying, like, look, if, if, if something happens and a woman gets hit, it's not the worst thing in the world, which isn't right, but that's, he's not saying, like, women need to be beaten. Yeah, like, no, he's no, not no. flat No, out. I, I know, I'm not criticizing. Yeah, it's not like a that. Mel Gibson thing, you know? <laughs> Mel, if you're listening and you're a fan, I'm sorry. But anyway, um... I loved you in The Beaver. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, you were pretty good. Um, yeah, I don't know, the scene's pretty disturbing, but I mean... But you mentioned, though, like, those movies like Straw Dogs and, uh, I Spit on Your Grave and Last House on the Left, and obviously those are more uncomfortable, but they're supposed to be. The thing with Goldfinger, it's supposed to be, like, they're playing the music, it's like, doo-loo, doo-loo, and it's like, doo, and it's like, supposed to be, like, this quirky moment <laughs> you're, in this you're right, actually. adventure. Like, it, that's why it stands out. Like, you're having such a great time, and then you're just like, ugh. That was ugly and uncomfortable. And then the rest of the movie, it's back to fun Bond adventure, and it's awesome. Like, the climax at Fort Knox is brilliant. Oh, one other point, too, about uh, Goldfinger. I love his scheme isn't a spoiler alert, I guess. His plan isn't to rob Fort Knox. It's to irradiate the gold there. That's really clever, in my opinion. Yeah. So, I think that's cool. So, uh, do, are, are we done on Goldfinger? Do you have anything else you want to... No. I mean, I, I really loved Goldfinger. Definitely my favorite Bond film, I'd say. All right. Scores? Um, I'd probably give it like a 9, 9.5. Right on. I, don't know, I can't really bring myself to give it a 10 because there are little things in it that mm -hmm. uh, that don't really work, but I don't know. It's just it's, uh, it's really great. Yeah, it's an A for me. It's definitely in the top echelon of Bond films, and would it, were it not for that scene we just spent a few minutes talking about, it would be an A+, plus and you know, probably the second best, my second favorite after From Rush With Love. But as it is, it's still, excuse me, still a great movie. And still in good company. So, uh, do you have any other points about these movies that we may have missed or neglected before we do a wrap up of the first three? Um, no, I don't think so. I mean, it's uh, yeah, I don't know. Right. I, can't I, I have one quick point I forgot to mention about Rush with Love because I got all excited about the awesomeness. <laughs> Blofeld in that movie, or number one, as he's referred to, we later find out is Blofeld. In that film and in Thunderball, he appears like that, where you don't see his face, you just hear his voice, and you see a hand stroking a cat. <laughs> That is my favorite incarnation of Blofeld of all the different ones. Mysterious, powerful, and threatening. Love it. That's... Anyway, so... Having never... He has a cat. That's... Should have had, like, a pit bull or something. <laughs> I, I don't know. It's, I can't... I don't know. I, I don't find cats threatening. So when see, I... Yeah, you know, yeah, I, I see supervillains with cats, it's like, it's a... I feel like... It's a white, fluffy cat. I don't know, know, know if this is true, but I feel like From Rush With Love kind of... Po and the Bond movies kind of popularized that. Oh, so, definitely, yeah. I don't really... It doesn't really bother me. All right, so having never seen... Well, you saw it from Rush with Love before, but have you never seen Dr. No and Goldfinger? Uh, what do you think of them as a collected work, and uh, what are your feelings towards the next Bond films we're going to watch as far as what you are expecting? Well, based on what you've told me, this is basically like as good as it's going to get, <laughs> the, 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 these, these three there's films. There's definitely greatness scattered throughout as it goes, but there's never going to be like a block of awesome like this again. Yeah. Um, I don't know. It just did, uh, What was the question? How did you feel as a whole about these three, and what are your expectations going forward? Oh right, no. Overall, I uh, I, I really like them. It um, made me realize how much I've been missing by not uh, by not having seen these before. I can't, can't believe it's actually taken me this long to watch them all. I mean, there's a lot of films, obviously, so uh, you know it's a bit of a marathon to do. But yeah, no, I I, I really like them. I uh, they were a lot of fun. Hmm. This is definitely probably one of the best. Uh, like Marathons, tri yeah. trilogies we've done so far. Oh yeah, I'd agree. I'll throw off Naked Gun. Naked we did Naked Gun. We did Evil Dead. And we did this. We, did we have we done any others? No, I don't think we have. All right, so it's just better than <laughs> Evil Dead. Yeah, it is. So. Um, okay. So yeah. So unless we do like a police academy marathon <laughs> or something, hopefully it won't get worse. Oh, like, but like thirty six of them. Uh, there's like six or seven. I think. Really? Yeah. Well. Um, I don't have any expectations of the series going forward because I've seen all of them, so I pretty much know exactly what I'll feel about them. But as far as these three, they still hold up as the upper echelon of uh, Bond films. I still think they're all great. They work well together, and I'm excited to see the rest of them because, you know, like after watching this, you know, marathon, all I've wanted to do because we're recording a few days after we saw them, yeah. and all I've been, you know, sitting at home like, fuck, I want to watch Thunderball and just keep going. <laughs> so, yeah, this. Uh... Actually, on on that note that we're doing this a couple of days after, I, I'm i not trying to say that it didn't really stick with me, but like I could see myself watching them again and still kind of seeing it as fresh, because I don't, I don't know, like I, I remember a lot from them, but other stuff is just sort of 
forgotten a bit. Mm-hmm. Um, Goldfinger's definitely stuck with me the most. But, uh, like, for Marsh with Love, I'd already seen it. But watching it again, it was like watching it for the first time because there was only a couple Because it's so good, right? I, I, I guess, but I, I, I don't know. Just, <laughs> I don't know what my point is with this. But maybe they just don't stick oh, as yeah. well as maybe... Well, they're they escapist do. films, right? Yeah. So. yeah, and that is the problem with escapists. I mean, occasionally you'll get, like, a great one that, you know, mm-hmm. really hits with you. But, uh, yeah. All right, so... Uh, Thank you for listening. What are your opinions on the first three Bond films? Let us know in the comments. Yep. No refunds.